Hi, everyone. My name is Jesse Tufexis, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the eighth episode of Meet the Author, presented by the Association for Canadian Jewish Studies. Our featured author today is actually an editor, in this case, Ruth Panofsky, who is joining us to discuss her, new, her great new uh, anthology, The New Spice Box, Contemporary Jewish Writing. Before I tell you more about Ruth and introduce our special guest interviewer, Catherine Cofield, a few words about the Association for Canadian Jewish Studies. The Association for Canadian Jewish Studies is the only academic society dedicated solely to the study of the Canadian Jewish experience. Our organization is multidisciplinary and we encourage interdisciplinarity. We publish the annual journal Canadian Jewish Studies, Etudes Juives Canadiennes. We also publish a newsletter twice a year and hold an annual conference. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we canceled our 2020 conference and decided to inaugurate our online events. In addition to this Meet the Author series, we are organizing a number of online panel sessions. Our first session broadcast on July 28th was on harassment and hate online realities and remedies. It's available for viewing on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our channel to find out about the upcoming events. And at the end of this interview, you will find information on the ACJS and we strongly encourage you to join the, the association and support its mandate to deepen our understanding of the Canadian Jewish experience. You'll also find information about ordering Ruth's book with a discount code. It's my pl pleasure now to give a proper introduction to our guest. Our interviewer, Catherine Cofield, is interested in ways in which uh, diverse discourses coexist with, within religions, the polysemic expressions of religious experience, and the creative, especially narrative, interpretation of healing from traumatic experience. She has received a number of awards, including a postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Toronto and a foreign government award with the government of Mexico. She serves as editor of the international journal Religious Studies and Theology. She's offered a number of keynotes, plenaries, and public lectures, published dozens of articles in international peer-reviewed journals and a number of monographs, and her own collection of poetry, fier, poems of suffering and surfacing. She's currently working on the Shirk supported project, Canadian Jewish Women Writers. Catherine, welcome to the show and thanks for doing this. Thank you, Jesse. And now to our editor. Ruth Panofsky is a poet and professor of English at Ryerson University in Toronto, where she teaches courses on Canadian Jewish writing and Holocaust literature. A specialist in the work of Canadian Jewish women writers, she has published a study of the novelist Adele Wiseman, a co-edited volume of the letters of Wiseman and Margaret Lawrence, and a two volume award-winning edition of the collected poems of Miriam Waddington. Her collection of essays, At Odds in the World, treats the work of Wiseman and Waddington, as well as Fridel Bruiser Maynard, Helen Weinzweig, Nora Gold, and Lillian Natel. In 2017, Ruth won the ACJS's Louis Rosenberg Canadian Jewish Studies Distinguished Service Award. And in 2018, she was elected a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. Ruth, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jesse. And I will be the other interviewer. In addition to serving as the co-organizer of this series of online events with Richard Menkis of the University of British Columbia, I am a PhD candidate in the Department of Classics and Religious Studies at the University of Ottawa with a research focus on North American Jewish fiction. So Ruth, uh, could you start by telling us a bit about yourself, uh, where you came from and what drew you to this topic? Well, I'm Montreal born and raised, and um, I studied at Carleton University and York University, where I did my PhD. And I have lived in Toronto for a very long time. My career is really um, here in Toronto. Um, and I have, ever since I started reading, been interested in um, Jewish Canadian writing largely as a way to kind of situate myself in literature. I've always been a reader and always sought to find my place um, in the world through writing. Um, and uh, Richler was the first writer that I discovered. Um, but then I, uh, as I became more interested in uh, studying uh, Jewish Canadian writing, I discovered the work of women writers, in particular, um, Miriam Waddington, Adele Wiseman, names that you've included in your introduction. And so I kind of made it my mission to discover for myself um, and later uh, for, through my scholarship writing that really spoke to me um, on so many levels. Thank you. Um, Catherine, thank you again for joining us. And now it's your turn, fire away. 
Um, so Ruth, the new Spice Box, it was published this past uh, September. It's the third in the Spice Box series, and it follows the 1981 anthology of Jewish Canadian writing that was published by Orpen and Denny's and the 2017 Spice Box. So the subtitle shifts and changes as the series uh, advances, moving from Jewish Canadian in 1981 to Canadian Jewish in 2017, and then to simply Jewish writing in 2020. So could you comment on the shift in focus that is reflected uh, in the subtitle? Sure. Um, so the I'm going to speak uh, first about um, the 1981 um, anthology was really foundational in terms of helping to set uh, the stage, uh, the foundation for the field of Canadian Jewish writing. Um, in 2017, um, I edited, as you mentioned, um, the new Spice Box subtitled Canadian Jewish Writing. The emphasis there was on Canadian writing. Um, some of it looked backward in time, um, much of it was contemporary. This anthology, uh, the spice boxes on the cover are pictured behind me, uh, is really emphasizing contemporary writers. The other thing is, is that um, the New Jewish Press imprint was acquired by the University of Toronto Press in 2018. And when the press uh, took over the imprint, it rebranded it and wanted uh, to uh, reach as broad an audience as possible. And so um, although um, this anthology was envisaged really as kind of volume two to follow what appeared in 2017, when the UTP took over, they wanted to um, uh, broaden the reach of the anthology and so, it became contemporary Jewish writing as opposed to Canadian Jewish writing uh, because uh, Canada is more narrow in the focus, uh, in its focus and so um, hence the subtitle. So it was as much practical a reason uh, for changing the subtitle of the 2020 um, anthology as anything else. Thank you. And uh, the 2020 collection, uh, like the 2017 one, is divided into the sections voice, place, and practice. Um, what are you communicating uh, to readers through these groupings? So yeah, um, I struggled to find a way to organize um, the anthology. Um, and uh, so this is a strategy that I came up with, but I will say that many of the works that I include under individual categories really traverse them. So there isn't, uh, uh, you know, readers will see that there's a lot of um, ways in which the works speak to one another across the volume. So part one voice though, um, uh, there are works, I placed works there that really foreground matters of language and idiom and the way in which language and idiom connect to um, identity. Um, part two, which is called place, uh, obviously refers to geography, but it goes beyond that. Um, refers to the lived experience of immigration and settlement, um, historical crises and cultural memory, um, persistent feelings of exile and marginalization that are still felt. Uh, and so these are some of the uh, ways in which writers have interpreted this idea of place as my second category. And then finally, in the third category of practice, um, not surprisingly, um, I've placed works that emphasize ritual and or tradition. Um, sometimes there's actual prayer involved in some of these works, but more often than not, um, prayer is expressed um, more as thought and emotion than it is through actual ceremony. So these are, are some, of the, some of the ideas that inform those three categories. Mm, thank you. Um, there seems to have been a shift in overall themes from the early 1980s uh, to the mid 2000s. So the first volume of the uh, Spice Box series rather straightforwardly narrates various perspectives related to adaptation to a new country. Whereas the new Spice Box collections seem more complex, more actively engaging a kind of transnationalism. 
And so what is the place of Canada amidst uh, the shift from adaptation to a new country to uh, rather uh, focus outside of its borders? Right, well, I'm, I'm gonna go back to um, the three iterations of the anthology um, and some of the comments that I, I've just made um, a little bit earlier. So um, in 1981, Jerry Sinclair and Morris Wolf uh, issued, they co-edited the first Spice Box. It was actually called The Spice Box, an anthology of Canadian, of Jewish Canadian writing. So the emphasis there was on Jewish over Canadian. And that was, I think, very deliberate. And that anthology um, marked the growth of Jewish literary activity in Canada over the course of the 20th century. It was the first of its kind. Much of the work, as you mentioned, Catherine, was explicitly concerned with the various ways in which cultural and national identities converge. And that book was really, um, it was the first anthology of its kind and it was important in laying the ground for the field of um, Canadian Jewish literature as we know it today. And then in 2017, um, my anthology called The New Spice Box, it invokes that um, first iteration in 1981, um, but it brings together um, uh, writers that trace a remarkable development and shift from the earlier anthology. And in that collection, we see writers are more inclined to um, explore their cultural inheritance by returning to a historical past that is rarely rooted in Canada. And this is interesting to me because writers are doing so because they feel um, securely enough in place um, here in Canada that they are um, able to, imagine, to imaginatively return to the past and explore their roots. In 2020, this anthology that we're talking about today, what we see is a, is a, is a, a further development where writers explore um, intersectional complexities of cultural and national identity. And um, I think because so many of the writers here are perhaps younger or more recent voices, what you get is a real sense of the comfort that they feel in writing openly about Jewish experience. And that openness and that sense of comfort is, um, is uh, I think distinctive and noticeable. Uh, and so there has been um, a shift that you can trace in terms of their orientation um, on Canadian soil to a Jewish cultural uh, past and sensibility that is really, really interesting. Mm, thank you. Um, Sigal Samuel has an interesting piece about language in the uh, 2020 collection. So could you say something about the articulation amongst languages, the Jewish ones of Yiddish and Hebrew, uh, the various national languages that are actively spoken in Canada and our own uh, official languages? Right, so language, of course, uh, is at the heart of Jewish experience. We can't talk about Jewish writing without talking about Yiddish. The language is so much part of um, even um, Jewish writing written in English now in terms of inflection and um, a Yiddish sensibility. I think it lives uh, as much as a language as a sensibility in the lives of Jewish writers. So um, uh, the interesting thing for me, in, set, in, um, in shaping this particular anthology uh, was this very question of language, uh, because there are references to, um, to Yiddish, there are references to Hebrew. Um, and so what I decided to do is open the volume with Bernice Eisenstein's uh, powerful piece about her love of Yiddish. And it's deliberate that that piece opens the work, but also looks backward at the same time. And as you say, it, the volume is closed with uh, Sigal Samuel's piece, and Sigal Samuel is one of the younger writers represented here. And she, her piece is really a love letter to the Yiddish language. I mean, that's what she, she, she subtitles it and, and the love comes through. And um, Hebrew is her first language. And so it's a piece that is very much situated in the present, but it looks outward to the future at the same time. So 
in a way, I see these two pieces as serving as linguistic bookends to this volume. Um, and my sense is that Canadian experience is kind of refracted anew through the languages um, in which writers um, uh, experience uh, life and then uh, write about that life. So um, language is very much something that um, is, I think, shaping the sensibility of, of the writers in this work. Um, my next question is going to refer back actually to that Eisenstein piece, because with the exception of the one uh, photo uh, in the two, 2017 collection, the Shulamus Yellen, uh, it included one, uh, that one photo. Uh, it's entirely letter text. But this latest collection includes uh, also a piece, uh, not only the Bernice Eisenstein, but also a piece by uh, Elaine Kalman Naves um, that includes uh, image. So do you see a movement um, to a greater integration of expressive media in literary works going forward? I do, I do. And I just wanna say how um, pleased I am that I was able to include images in this anthology because as I'm sure, I'm sure you know, um, it's costly to do so. And um, the University of Toronto Press um, was incredibly helpful uh, because the logistics of including the images to accompany Bernice's piece was no, they, they were complicated. It was a complicated process. And so, um, but I think that the images and the text are really one of a piece in the case of Eisenstein's work. And um, the powerful essay by Elaine Coleman Naves really is brought to life by those photographs. And of course, her pieces about the Holocaust and photographic evidence of the Holocaust is so important in that, um, in, in recording that history. And it, 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 they are essential in terms of the kind of witnessing that she's bearing in her piece. But to get back to your question, I do see um, a rise, um, particularly of the graphic novel. And we see that in that, we see that um, being validated in that Sarah Levitt's graphic novel, Agnes Murderous just won the Vine Award. And it was the first time that a graphic novel won in the category of fiction. And uh, I imagine that that's going to continue. And um, I think that there's going to be um, an increase in this kind of work, absolutely. Um, so to change the focus a bit, I would, I, I would identify you as the researcher who has done the most work in the area of Canadian Jewish women's writing. And not only specific authors like Miriam Waddington and Adele Wiseman, but also Jewish Canadian women writers more broadly. So is this research interest, the focus on uh, women writers in particular, is it reflected in the two collections of the new Spice Box? Yes, it is. <laughs> I will say that I... Um, uh, I was very deliberate in bringing women's voices into uh, both of the anthologies that I edited. And um, I was so grateful for the chance to do that because um, uh, their voices deserve a place alongside the well-known male writers. Uh, and, uh, and so I was very conscious, not only of trying to find um, writing by women, but writing um, by other um, groups within that larger category. Um, so um, people who explore different sexual orientations, for example, different cultural backgrounds. I was very attentive to um, the need to uh, include voices by women, but also to include as diverse a range of um, voices uh, and the articulation of a diverse range of experiences as possible. So it was a very conscious and deliberate effort. And you in fact wear two hats. And so is there a connection between your role as a scholar and your work as a creative writer in your choices for these anthologies? I, I think there was. Um, I wanted to include a mix of writing um, from the very beginning. Um, I didn't want an anthology that um, only uh, that favored prose over poetry. So that might come from my bias as a poet. I love poetry. 
I read a lot of poetry and I wanted, and I, I also think there are lots of um, Jewish poets, uh, Canadian Jewish poets, and I wanted to um, showcase their work here. The other thing is, is that I really love the way um, that uh, prose fiction, memoir, and poetry work um, in this kind of, they, they interplay and, and uh, taken together, they give, I think, a very rich picture of uh, Jewish writing. So um, the texts are, speak to one another ab across a genre as much as they do across experience. And I, I wanted, I really want that um, sense of uh, a rich mixture to come through. And so uh, I guess that's where my sensibility as a poet came in and, um, and uh, the, the, the importance of language was as a poet, of course, um, and you know this, every word counts. And so I was very attentive to how language works um, and wanted that to come through um, in the collections that I presented. Thank you. Um, the 2020 collection includes a piece by Norm Rabin, who's originally a Westerner, now living out East, as we say, from here in the West, uh, as well as works by uh, Issa Milman and Renee Norman. Uh, but by and large, this volume, which is different from the 2017, includes mostly authors from Montreal and Toronto. Um, could you comment on the influence of living in urban centers with notable Jewish and literary communities? as opposed to living in environments that are more isolated from these, from these centers? Well, it's true. Um, Jews around the world have gravitated to urban centers. I mean, this is, this is a fact. And I, I think that you're right in noting that um, the writers gathered in uh, the new Spice Box um, 2020 are uh, located um, mostly in Montreal and Toronto. Um, but at the same time, what's interesting is that there is a tremendous amount of diversity in the pieces that they produce um, from those two main centers. So there's a lot of diversity in terms of class, for example, and cultural background. Uh, there's diversity, uh, a broad range of diversity around religious practice, um, secular or a, a secular approach to, to Judaism. There is a wide range of ancestral roots. There is differing sexual orientation language, which we've all already talked about. And so um, if Montreal and Toronto uh, today, uh, if they are the urban homes to the majority of the writers represented here, that doesn't mean that Montreal and Toronto are the focus literarily of the work. I think that um, what happens is, uh, and I, I've tried to do this as so I've tried to um, show um, a diversity of experience, a broad um, wide ranging set of voices um, in assembling this anthology. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to ask a combination uh, question here, um, because the Spicebox series clearly delineates, delineates an important subfield within Canadian literature. So uh, I wonder if you could elaborate on what Jewish fiction, as primarily Jewish fiction, or as, as particularly Jewish, what does it bring to the broader field of Canadian literature and um, the inverse as well? So what then does um, the subfield, what does it being Canadian? What does that add to, uh, to the wider field of Jewish literature? So that's a really, really big question. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, we're running out of time here. I, I know, it's a really big question. I'll do my best, um, but my, my answer will not be a definitive one. I think you can write a dissertation on this. Um, I'm sure you can. So I think it's true. I know it's true that writers of any and all cultural backgrounds enrich and broaden the canvas of Canadian literature. And um, so to take the first part of your question, Jewish writers um, often in the past, and I think still to an extent today, 
they write from the margins. And so, and that position is used to their advantage. So they see things anew or askew, if I can use those words. And as a result, they write illuminating and insightful works about Canada from that experience. And then when it comes to what, what does uh, uh, Canada, how does Canada inform Jewish writing? Well, I think Canada is so vast, uh, an idea and, an, and a ge geography that's probably more accurate or safer to talk about the specific places inhabited by Jewish writers, like where the Jewish writer finds him or herself and that place, how it informs their writing. So um, the inverse is that um, as Jewish writers articulate things from kind of um, a, a, a side perspective, um, Canada at the same time offers Jewish, Jewish writers a sense of rootedness and a sense at the same time of being able to write freely as Jews and about their Jewish experience. That's the case today, I think more than it was in the past. And I think that um, contemporary um, Jewish writers in Canada feel that that's something that Canada offers them. And how do your students respond to literature that contains reference with which they might be entirely unfamiliar? Yeah, I love that. I love teaching this work, which I do to um, students and the vast majority of whom are not Jewish. At Ryerson, where I teach, I have uh, undergra senior undergraduate students and um, it's the odd student that is Jewish in my class. And I would say that uh, they respond fully and with great curiosity. Many of my students are the children of immigrants themselves or immigrants uh, themselves. And they tend to respond to the stories, the poems, the novels I teach as stories very often of immigration, settlement, adaptation, and they feel really, really connected to the work. Um, so there's a certain universal appeal that they readily um, recognize and it's very invigorating and uh, I help them along as much as I can. Uh, you know, I, I trace the development um, in my undergraduate class, I trace the development of, um, of Canadian Jewish writing from um, Montreal to the Western Winnipeg and then to Toronto. So I organize the materials around um, centers of Jewish activity and that helps orient them in this uh, material that is, as you say, largely new to them. But um, I would say that they, they are really engaged and um, it's wonderful to see, it really is. I enjoy it a lot. Good, um, thank you. I think I have time for just one more question. Um, all right, so, um, Perhaps what uh, directions do you see Canadian Jewish writing moving in as we enter the third decade of the 21st century? Right, that's, that's an exciting uh, thing to contemplate. So I see uh, more diversity of voices coming forward. So, um, you know, the, uh, it doesn't matter how many anthologies we produce, they will never uh, reflect all the richness of voices and writing that's out there. And so, for example, there's work by um, uh, Daniela Botha. Uh, she writes prose. She is of South African descent. So um, I imagine that those voices um, of, uh, that will come out of the South African community in Canada um, are awaiting publication um, and uh, wider publicity. Sephardic writers, um, their works, um, their community is going to, I'm sure, produce work. It's starting um, with the work of, uh, of poets, um, and, but I, I imagine that that is going to uh, flourish. Um, suburban writing, um, Sidura Ludwig, who is now based in Thornhill, Ontario, a suburb of Toronto, but originally from Winnipeg has just published a collection of short stories that um, articulate the kind of modern Orthodox experience um, in this largely Jewish suburb north of Toronto. Uh, writers from the West, I think there's a boom, uh, a mini boom, I would say, of writers um, uh, of Jewish background out West. And I, I see that really uh, developing further. 
Um, so that's in terms of voice and background, but I also see um, uh, new works um, in terms of genre. And one of the genres that is really exploding, of course, is uh, the memoir and creative nonfiction. Um, a recent memoir by Mira Sucharov, who is another Winnipegger by birth, but lives in Ottawa and teaches at Carleton. She's just published a memoir, um, a very interesting um, memoir. Uh, and I think that there's going to be a real growth in creative nonfiction, which is um, a, a very exciting uh, field developing um, in North America. And I wonder about, um, you know, uh, writing by Jews who leave orthodoxy, which is, uh, which seems to be a subgenre of its own. We're waiting for the Canadian version of that. I mean, who knows? But there, I, I, I foresee lots of new stuff and exciting new stuff coming out. Amazing. Ruth, I have uh, one more question, if I may. Um, it's about your job as the editor of an anthology that has a predecessor. Uh, so my question is this, how did you navigate the relationship between the work that came before and what you were trying to do? Were there specific elements or themes that Jerry Sinclair and Morris Wolf featured that you wanted to maintain and others that you wanted to avoid or update? Um, was this something that was on your mind throughout or did you really want to sort of blaze your own path with that? Um, I will admit that I really wanted um, my work on the new spice boxes to be my own. I wanted, um, I was very admiring of the first spice box and indebted to it. Um, but I was, uh, I really wanted to show how much had developed and changed. Um, I don't really use the word, I don't want to use the word mature, but mature in terms of writers writing out of a more settled experience, right? Because I think in the first anthology, writers were really preoccupied with articulating a sense of um, settlement, of immigration settlement, and then adapting to um, life in Canada. And uh, by the time I came to editing the anthologies, I, I knew that, that writers um, had moved beyond those experiences. They're still very much part of their history and their cultural reference in their writing, but I wanted to give a sense of the new, hence the, you know, I emphasize new, uh, the spice box, and I really did look to um, show um, what was new and um, what was um, reconceived anew, perhaps, but I really wanted to show um, a development and a move uh, forward, um, both in terms of the present uh, and then moving outward into the future. So, yeah, I bore I bore that in I bore the 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 word new in mind as I worked on these anthologies. Very interesting, Ruth. Uh, this has been great. Thank you for doing this with us. My pleasure, and thank you for um, allowing me to talk about the anthology. Thank you, Catherine, for your wonderful questions. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the ACJS's interest in my work. Catherine, thank you for being our guest interviewer. Really appreciate it. Thank you for the invitation. And I am Jesse Tufexis. Please keep watching so that you can find out uh, information about joining the Association for Canadian Jewish Studies and to get ordering information and a discount code for the new Spice Box. Thank you for watching and stay healthy.